The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. I'm Mr. Bakoto Bayo, your geography teacher. So we are going to continue our lesson today. But in the last class, I gave an assignment. The assignment was to list the seasons that we have in Cameroon. To list the seasons that we have in Cameroon. In the last class, we discussed on how to consume the chemograph. So you're supposed to give me now the seasons that we have in Cameroon. So the seasons that we have in Cameroon are the rainy season and the dry season. The rainy season and the dry season. So today we continue our lesson 13, which is on the biogrammatic zones of Cameroon. Our lesson shall consist of the objectives, what you should be able to do at the end of this lesson, the previous knowledge, what you need to better understand this lesson, a real situation to make you think about how you can apply this lesson to solve a given problem, learning activities properly, and I'll give exercises and an assignment toward the end of the lesson. To better understand this knowledge, you should have an idea about the climate and the vegetation types of Cameroon. That is why the assignment was to give the two seasons that we have in Cameroon, the rainy and the dry season. How long is the rainy season in this place? How long is the dry season in this other place? We are going to see the influence of the climate on the vegetation and the soil of various parts of Cameroon. Which type of vegetation do you know? Which type of vegetation? Where do gorillas live? Why do we have different types of vegetation? These are the questions that you are supposed to ask yourself. And you are supposed to give me the answers at the end of this lesson. Which type of vegetation do you know? <coughs> One, two, or maybe three. Okay. Where do gorillas live? Where do elephants live? Where do giraffes live? Where do leopards live? And why do we have different types of vegetation? So remember in our lesson one, you are supposed to ask yourself a question about what you see. You observe. You observe things. You observe the vegetation. You observe the animal. You observe everything in nature. And after you ask yourself a question, why do you have different types of vegetation? For example, they are going to answer that in the course of their lesson. Now think about this. <clears throat> the rapid rate of deforestation to construct houses, to establish farms, to construct roads, has led to the disappearance of so many animals and plants. We need, we cut the forest, we cut the trees of the forest, because we want to construct our houses. We want to construct the roads. We want to establish our farm. We want to carry out agriculture. We cut the trees because we need the wood to produce wood, to produce benches, to produce many other things. So when you see that, you realize that so many trees are being cut every day. Consequently, many plants and animals 
disappear. The animals that live in the forest, the forest disappear. They have, they cannot longer stay in that place. Therefore, they will be forced to go away. And if they cannot go away, they will be forced to die and disappear. There are some trees and plants that are equally very rare and that can live only in a thick forest. As you are cutting trees, those plants which are rare will eventually disappear. So when you think about that, what do you think should be done to avoid such a tragedy from continuing? What should we do for it to stop? For example, you can reduce deforestation. You can say if they were getting 10,000 trees every year, they can decide now to get maybe 100 or 50 trees every year. And apart from reducing, since the animals are supposed to come back, some plants are supposed to come back, we should practice afforestation and reafforestation. Afforestation, which is the planting of trees where there were no trees. To see a place where there have never been trees. But trees are needed there. Therefore, you go, you plant the trees for the trees to, to go. And now, reafforestation is the, the planting of trees where the trees have been cut down. So, you reduce the rate of deforestation and then you practice afforestation and reafforestation to increase the number of trees in the place. After some time, the animal will come, come back. So, the climate of ecosystem that we have seen in the notion of the environment, we have seen that there are various ecosystems that vary in size, that change over time, and that have different aspects like climate, animal, vegetation. The climate of ecosystem varies from one region to another. In that if you come to a, place, to a given place, you're going to see the climate which element, temperature and rainfall, the main element, temperature and rainfall, they are particular in a given place. When you go to another place, you observe that those elements of climate are different. So now, as they are different, the climate influences the type of soil, the type of vegetation, and the type of animal that are going to live in that place. We therefore have the notion of natural region. What is a natural region? A natural region is an area which has the same climate, the same vegetation, the same soil, the same animals that live there. And since the characteristics, the natural characteristics are the same, they will tend to influence the same kind of human activities. So, a natural region an area with the same climate, same vegetation, soil, animal, and consequently similar human activities. At the end, you should be able to define natural region. We now have the bioclimatic zone of Cameroon. The bioclimatic zone and the natural region, they are the same. They are two expressions to mean, to mean the same. There are three main natural regions in Cameroon. We have firstly, the equatorial or the rainforest bioclimatic zone. We have the tropical bioclimatic zone. We have, thirdly, the mountainous bioclimatic zone. You should be able to locate each of these bioclimatic zones. You should be able to give the characteristics of the equatorial or the rainforest bioclimatic zone. Give the characteristics of the tropical bioclimatic zone, give the characteristic of the mountainous bioclimatic zone. Talking about characteristic, that is the temperature, the rainfall, the soil, and the vegetation, and equally animals and human activities. We have a map that is showing the location of the bioclimatic zone of Cameroon. Okay, you have the map of Cameroon. You see 
This part, which is down south. This part, which is down south. It is the equatorial bioclimatic zone. You see now this part, which is up. It is the tropical bioclimatic zone. Tropical bioclimatic zone. You realize that the equatorial bioclimatic zone, since it is the part which is south, is again divided into two. You have the part which is dark, and this other part around the coast of Cameroon. We are going to see those different bioclimatic zones, one after the other. This one, which is dark, that we are going to emphasize today, is the rainforest bioclimatic zone. Here we have the mangrove, the mangrove area, the mangrove area, the bioclimatic, the rainforest bioclimatic zone. Now in the north, the tropical is most similar of the savanna, and the savanna is divided into into three. Divided into three, you have the Sahel savanna. We have the Guinea here. Yeah. This one, we have the Guinea. Then when you move up, you have the Sudan savanna. When you move up, you have the Sahel savanna. We are going to see that. These different bioclimatic zones are influenced by climate. The greater the amount of rainfall, the greater the amount of trees. So we are going to see that in this area where we have a lot of water, where we have a lot of water, we have a lot of trees. And that as we move towards the north, as we move towards the north, the amount of rainfall is decreasing. Therefore, we have lesser trees and more grass. And as we move to the north again, the grass will instead disappear, leaving the way to a bare soil. So we are going to examine each biogrammatic zone one after the other. So we start with the first one, the equatorial biogrammatic region. What is the location? It is located between latitude 2 degrees north and 6 degrees north of the equator. You see the name, Equatorial Bioclimatic Zone. It's me, it means it is found around which latitude? Around the equator. The equator which is latitude 0 degrees. So, since now we are in Cameroon, it is found near the equator, you see, latitude, between latitude 2 degrees north, and 6 degrees north of the equator. So we have the equatorial bioclimatic zone of Cameroon. Where can we have the equatorial bioclimatic zone in Cameroon? We can see it in the southwest, the center, the east, and the south regions. You have seen the map where it is, it is found. You have seen the map, the center, the east, the south, the southwest, those are the areas where we have the equatorial bioclimatic zone. And we said from two, from two to six degrees north of the equator. What are the characteristics of the bioclimatic zone of the equator? It is subdivided into two. We have the Guinea type, the Guinea type, and the Cameroonian type. What is the Guinea type? What is the Cameroonian type? The Guinea type is found in the southern low plateau. Southern low plateau. Up to around Yaoundé, the south region, the center, the south, the east. So it covers the southern low plateau. The rainfall is high, ranging from 1,500 millimeter to 2,000 millimeter. We have seen how we can observe amount of rainfall using the rain gauge. So we have seen that it is measured in millimeter. The amount of rainfall is measured in millimeter. So the amount there ranges from 1,500 millimeter to 2,000 millimeter. What about the temperature? 
the temperatures there are fairly constant throughout the year, ranging from about 21 degrees Celsius to 28 degrees Celsius. So the lowest temperature, the moon with the lowest temperature is 21, and the moon with the highest temperature there is 23 degrees Celsius. So they are fairly constant. Temperatures rarely go be, uh, below 21 and rarely go beyond 28. It has four seasons, two rainy seasons and two dry seasons. A long rainy season, a long rainy season, a short rainy season, a long dry season and a short dry season. You have, for example, a rainy season for September to, to, the, to October. October. After you have November, December, January, you have the dry season. After you have the rainy season, January to something like March. After that period, you have a period of dryness. April, May, June, July, even. Dry season. So you see the four season, two rainy season, and the two dry seasons of the Guinea type found on the southern low plateau. We have secondly, the Cameroonian type. It now covers the southwest coast around Mount Cameroon and the western highland. It has two seasons. A long rainy season of eight months, that is, from the month of March to the month of October. And a dry season of four months, from November to February. We have a rainfall which ranges from 900 mm to 2,000 mm. And the average temperature there is 27 degrees Celsius. So I hope you can see the difference between the climate of the Guinea type and the climate of the Cameroonian type. We saw for the Guinea type that it has four seasons, two rainy, two dry. But here for the Cameroonian type, we have two seasons. One rainy season and one dry season. We saw that for the Guinea type, the temperature range was from 21 to 28. Here we have an average temperature of 27 degrees Celsius. We saw that the, the rainfall ranged from 1,500 mm to 2,000 mm for the Guinea type, but now for the Cameroonian type, the rainfall ranges from 900 mm to 2,000 mm. And what about the location? The location for the Guinea type, we said it is in the southern low plateau, covering the center, the south, and the east. But here it covers the southwest coast around and Cameroon and the western highland. You should be able to compare the Guinea type and the Cameroonian type. Now let's go to the vegetation. That was the climate. Let's go now to the vegetation. The climate that we saw, high rainfall, high temperature, has led to the development of two types of vegetation, the mangrove and the rainforest. What is the mangrove? What is the rainforest? The mangrove forest is found around the swamps of the little one. The swamps are the part where we always have water. Water is always there. So it is found on the swamps of the little run. The main species that are found in the mangrove are the red mangrove and the raffia palms. The mangrove forest has area roots. It means you can see the roots. The roots go above the water, above the soil. So you can see. That is why they are said to be area roots. They are called area or prop roots. The trees there are shorter. They are shorter, they are lower in height. The shrub and trees and trees with large form are very few. It's difficult to see a big tree in the mangrove. The trees have some have buttress roots and some have prop roots, but mostly they have the prop roots or the area roots. So this is a picture to see the mangrove. We're talking about the area roots or the prop roots. You see how the roots of 
the trees are going out of water. Going out of water. And you see that the trees are not very tall. They are short trees. Look at the trunk. The trunk here is, is, is very tiny. Very tiny. And you can see that light, light from the sun can enter into can enter and reach the, the, the surface. So light can enter into the mangrove. Light can enter into the mangrove. The trees are tiny. The roots are above the surface. They are area roots or hop roots. Okay. Now let's go to the rainforest. We should be able to compare the rainforest and the mangrove. The rainforest now covers a large part of the southern low plateau. So still center south and east. The trees there are tall, some reach 60 meters of height, you can imagine, they are very, very tall. The trees have broad leaves, they have broad leaves to be able to, to capture sun, sunlight. The broad leaves form a canopy, a canopy means that since the trees are very tall, when they have their the branches, the continuation of their branches. This tree is having the branches, this other tree is having the branches. So, since they are very tall, the branches and the leaf will completely block the sun, the sunlight. So that light will not come from the sun to, to reach the surface. So we block, we form therefore a canopy. And since the light cannot penetrate into the forest, there is now little plants. No plants can grow because plants need uh, light for photosynthesis. There is little or no undergrowth below the canopy. The rainforest has rootless food. The leaves are always green. The trees are in layers. We have the tallest trees, the moderate height, and the shorter, the shorter trees. Some tree species are the maogani, the iroko, the ebony, and the obesha. Most of these trees are used and cut down by exploitation companies. We have many animals that live there, such as monkeys, chimpanzees, gorillas, porcupine, pangolin, and some birds. In the rainforest. Still in the rainforest, apart from the animal, apart from the timber, that is the trees, we equally have non-timber forest products that are available there. You have, for example, the aero, the aero or cock. Those leaves that, that we use to, to get, to produce, to make food. We have the walnut, or what we call in French, noisette. We have the monkey cola. We have jamsam. You have the bush mango, or ogono. You have the bitter cola. You have the red cola nut. You have the bush pepper. You have the bush onion. You have the bush plum. You have the cashew nut. Those are the things that you can equally have in the forest. So this is an image of the rainforest. You can see how <coughs> the leaves are evergreen. The leaves are always green. You see the tall trees. You see how the branches of the trees are, 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 such, are such that light cannot enter into, into the forest. So you see how it is dark. It is dark below the trees. Very dark. Now, we have the soil. There are two types of soil, namely the zonal and the azonal soil. The zonal soil are influenced by climate and vegetation of the area. In the equatorial block climatic zone, the zonal soil type is called the phyalitic soil. It is the most extensive soil type in the equatorial block climatic zone, meaning that there are other soil types, but this one, this soil type is the one which is found almost everywhere. It is, the, it is called the phyalitic soil. How is the phyalitic soil? The phyalitic soil are thick and reddish brown. Are thick and reddish brown. 
They contain a lot of clean and are generally very poor, meaning that if you carry your agriculture on that soil, you're not going to have a very good harvest. They are infertile. Why? Because of heavy litting. Litting now is when water falls on the surface. Since we saw that the rainfall is abundant, abundant rainfall will fall on the surface. It's going to wash down all the nutrients. Therefore, the topsoil that will be left will be infertile without nutrients. We have azonal soils, that is soil that are found only in some particular places. They are influenced now not by climate, they are influenced now by the rock type and the works of water. For example, we have the volcanic soil, which is found around the volcanic mountains such as Mount Fako. They are very fertile. They are very fertile. That is why we have a lot of plantations that are established in, in the southwest around Mount Cameroon. We have, for example, the CDC, the CDC which is found around Mount Cameroon. We have the alluvial plains that are found, the alluvial soil that are found around the coastal plain, for that we have in the plain. Now, this is the soil which is produced by the action of water. So, firstly, first type of azonal soil, volcanic soil, produced around the volcanic mountain, such as Mount Faco. And secondly, the alluvial soil, produced by the action of water. As water will carry away soil particles, it will deposit in some places, therefore it will change the nature of the soil. The soil there will be uh, made up of sand, and the particle, the nutrient will be washed and deposited at, around those places. And they are therefore very fertile. So, from what we have learned today, these are the exercises. Using the blank map provided, locate and name the equatorial bioclimatic zone. Using the blank map provided, locate and name the equatorial bioclimatic zone. Okay, this is the equatorial bioclimatic zone that we have seen at the beginning of the lesson. We said it ranges from latitude 2 degrees north to 6 degrees north, found covering the southern low plateau and extending to westward around the western region, extending to the southwest. We have located the southern low plateau, so covering the center, the center region, the south region, the east region, and the southwest region, from latitude two to six degrees north. Now define bioclimatic region. What is a bioclimatic region? A bioclimatic region is an area with the same climate. The same vegetation, the same soil, the same animal living there, and consequently events the same type of human activities. Exercise 3. Compare the mango forest and the rainforest. Compare the mango forest and the rainforest. We have to the left the mango forest and to the right the rainforest. First, Difference in the mango forest, the trees are shorter, while in the rainforest, the trees are very tall. Secondly, the trees don't form a canopy in the mango forest, meaning that light from the sun can penetrate, can enter into the soil, into the forest, and reach the soil. In the rainforest, the trees form a canopy because the, the trees have a lot of leaves and the leaves will now block the light from the sun so that light will not enter into the forest. The forest will be very dark and consequently the plants that are found below will not be able to grow. We have crop roots which are dominant in the mangrove forest. The area roots, the roots which are found above the earth's surface, above water 
while in the rainforest, the trees have the bushes out. The mangrove develops on swampy areas, that is, areas having permanently water, while the rainforest develops on relatively drier area, a land where there is no, there is no water. So, okay. a monochromatic zone has the same climate, same vegetation, soil, which influence the type of human activity. And there are various monochromatic zones in Cameroon. The equatorial monochromatic zone, which is divided into two, the Guinea type and the Macamoon type. The Guinea type, which is found, the Guinea type, which is found in the Southern Low Plateau, while the Macamoon type is the common type is found on the Western Highland. Assignment for each of the biochromatic regions of Cameroon leads to animals that live there. These were the references consulted. We have aqua constants and interactive physical geography for ordinary level. https slash www.cameroonwebsite.com. We have Chambi. We have Jabe Holland. So, in our next lesson, we are going to discuss about the biochromatic regions of Cameroon. The second part is worth the first part. So, see you in the next lesson. Una tege si matege yop, una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, ngani bana matege mut, ngani la kiri watege ndom, esa kina bia jinkido, mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam atonge tam zabike tam 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 amote tam zabike mane tambia niña ne injo biayen 